someone says to me like, oh, like Batman killed a guy. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 I'm like, wake the f up. It's like, I'm 100% fine with it. There, it's a cool point of view to be like, my heroes are still innocent, you know? My heroes didn't f***ing, you know, lie to America. My heroes didn't, you know, embezzle money from their corp. My heroes didn't f***ing commit any atrocities. I'm like, that's cool, but you're living in a f***ing dream world, okay? <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Shazam is coming out in less than two weeks and it's already getting pretty great reviews across the board with many critics calling attention to its light, funny tone and it's real heartfelt sincerity. I think it's strange that critics almost feel like they have to specifically say that a new superhero movie, specifically a new DC movie, is light in tone. I mean, after all, we're firmly in a post-Avengers world. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has been around for 10 years now, more than that at this point, and the light tone of superhero films is firmly established by them. These films clearly define what it means to be a superhero movie in this decade, and the Marvel films are well known for being humorous and upbeat. Even the more serious films like Winter Soldier and Infinity War are known to have some good funny moments and a lot of exciting moments to go along with the seriousness. Remember, Infinity War is a movie where a lot of people die, and yet they still found time for Rocket and Bucky to do this. Not for sale. Okay, how much for the arm? Oh, I'll get that arm. I mean, how does that not bring a smile to your face? That's a good time right there. Now, of course, just because that's the dominant style doesn't mean that that's the only style. There are plenty of superhero films that do take a more serious route, a more dramatic and contemplative route that seem to work out just fine. Movies like Logan, about a broken old superhero in the last days of his sad, miserable life. Or a movie like Wonder Woman, a film about somebody who's trying to do good in the world while slowly learning that there is evil all around her and there's nothing she can really do to stop it. And of course, you have Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, three super serious gritty crime dramas that also happen to be the three greatest comic book movies of all time. Yeah, even this one, guys. And of course, that's not to say that the more lighthearted superhero films are flawless in their own right. A lot of these movies like Doctor Strange and even the well-regarded Thor Ragnarok often lean a bit too hard into the humor side, often at the expense of the more serious and dramatic elements. In the end, it's all about balance. The best superhero films know when to take inspiration from the source material, take it seriously, and know when to get the big crowd-placing moments in, and also aren't that afraid to deviate when absolutely necessary. Throwing in a joke here and there doesn't hurt, but in moderation, and timing helps a lot. So what the hell does all of this have to do with Shazam? Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but the current DC Cinematic Universe is kind of infamous for not being very lighthearted. In fact, in the beginning, it is pretty safe to say that it was devoid of all levity, so to speak. Man of Steel, the first film of this universe, had some moments of levity, but is more known for being about a sad sack superhero and showing scenes of destruction and epic poses. Batman vs Superman, the second film of this universe, had one joke, maybe two. The rest of it was all about a really angry Batman wanting to kill sad sack Superman, who was still very sad from the last movie. So these two films firmly establish that this is a very serious world we're dealing with. The heroes aren't just flawed, they wallow in their flaws. There really was the sense that there was no room for laughter or any sort of fun at all. It was really trying to push that this was a horrible place to be. In fact, the more you think about it, Batman's speech to Superman right before he's gonna kill him in Batman vs Superman really sort of is the whole mission statement, main idea of these films towards superheroes. I bet your parents taught you that you need 
means something. That you're here for a reason. My parents taught me a different lesson. Dying in the gutter for no reason at all. They taught me the world only makes sense if you force it to. Of course, I should point out that this scene happens right before Batman changes his mind and becomes best friends with Superman. Now, this version of the DC Cinematic Universe, or whatever the hell they wound up calling it, they changed the name like a hundred times, didn't ring true with a lot of people. They did okay at the box office, these films, but a lot of people did not like them. And not just critics, either. Fans did not like these movies. Not all fans, of course. There is a significant number of people who do prefer this version of the DC Cinematic Universe. This more dark and serious, grim and gritty, no fun allowed version of men in their underwear beating up other men in their underwear. I mean, I don't get it, but whatever you like, man. Point is, this dark version of the DC Universe wasn't really working the way Warner Brothers kind of wanted it to. It wasn't universally liked by everybody. So, naturally, Warner Brothers decided to do a very quick course correction. Try to right the ship as quickly as possible and hope nobody notices. They took Suicide Squad, the next film on their docket, and one that looked like it was going down the same route as Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, and turned it into, well, Suicide Squad. But then, in 2017, we got Wonder Woman. And while this film was definitely set in the DC Cinematic Universe, something felt different about it. Sure, the color palette was still kind of dark, the action scenes had a lot of slow motion, and the end fight was against a generic gray CGI monster, but the rest of the film was filled with this odd sense of hopefulness. This sense that the character you were watching was not only a hero, but actively wanted to be one. She didn't attack or destroy without purpose, she just wanted to do the right thing by any means necessary. And the film was not afraid to show its characters have some time to bond with each other, dance with each other, or even have ice cream for God's sake. What do you think? Wonderful. Yeah. You should be very proud. After Wonder Woman came Justice League, which, despite being an absolute mess in tone, it was pretty much the exact opposite of what Batman vs Superman was. It was almost like a comedy, if you will. Granted, not all the humor landed very well, but I mean, they had to try something, I guess. Definitely bleeding. And then came last year's Aquaman, a film that continued the trend of being lighthearted to the point of turning the movie into a live action cartoon. And it was all the better for it. I still can't get over how colorful Aquaman was, how unafraid it was to be weird and silly and nonsensical just like the comics are. For the longest time I thought Aquaman was just going to be a shirtless Jason Momoa, but seeing him in the orange and green costume and looking good was something I never thought I'd live to see. And now we have Shazam, which looks to be continuing that same trend. And finally, DC has carved out a nice little niche for themselves. Their movies are good as they've ever been, and they have a new style to them. They're not necessarily copying the Marvel style per se, but they're doing it in their own unique way. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam are currently the best reviewed films in the DC Cinematic Universe. And they have many things in common. Yes, they are more lighthearted, but they're also standalone films. They don't really connect with each other or the greater universe in any significant way. But perhaps most crucially, this guy had very little to do with any of them. Yes, our old friend Mr. Zack Snyder, the director of the actually very good Dawn of the Dead remake. It's pretty well known that this guy single-handedly established the dark tone early on for the DC Cinematic Universe, starting with Man of Steel and then doubling down with Batman vs Superman. And by all accounts, the original plan for Justice League was to continue down that path, to build off the nightmare scene from Batman vs Superman and depict a world where Superman has been turned evil by Darkseid. And yeah, that sounds great! That also probably sounds like something not a lot of people want to see. Look, Wonder Woman and Aquaman didn't just review better than Snyder's DC films. They also outgross them as well. And by all accounts, Shazam is looking to do the exact same thing. It's already reviewed better than Snyder's DC films, and I'm pretty sure it's going to outgross them, or at least match them in terms of box office. The point is, finally, after years of wondering when DC was going to get their act together, 
and release films that weren't depressing messes, we finally got movies that a lot of people, the majority of people can all agree are good superhero films. People actually enjoyed Wonder Woman and Aquaman. And from the look of things, it seems like everybody on Twitter who saw Shazam early really enjoyed that film as well. People are more excited for the DC films now than they've ever been before. And all it really took was getting rid of the guy who once said it would be cool if Batman got raped in prison. Don't ever forget that he said that. So, no, Mr. Snyder, we will not shut the f up. Because the fact that Batman and Superman kill people in your films isn't the reason why we don't like them. That's just a convenient shorthand for all the problems we happen to have with your version of the DC heroes. We just called you out on it and you got mad at us for calling you out on it. But you know what? That's okay, dude. You can go off now and do the movies you want to do. You can make that adaptation of The Fountainhead. You can do that Las Vegas zombie movie that you're planning on doing for Netflix. We'll be over here in the corner with the DC films the way we like them to be. Good. And with all that said, I know I don't have to tell you to let me know down below or anywhere on the internet what you think of the current state of the DC Cinematic Universe, whether or not you think it was better when Zack Snyder was running things. Zack Snyder seems to bring out people from all corners of the internet to get together and just fight with each other. So I know that's gonna happen in the comments without me saying anything anyway. And before anyone says anything, yes, I know he has a writer credit on Wonder Woman, but by all accounts, Patty Jenkins rewrote a lot of that film and his footprint on that was very minimal by the end of it. So really that was Patty Jenkins' film throughout. And just a reminder, I own a lot of his films, surprisingly. I, like I said, I really liked his Dawn of the Dead. His 300 was pretty good. Uh, Watchmen, I don't hate, you know, there's a lot of problems with it, but I don't hate it. I think there's a lot of good points to it. And Sucker Punch, this movie's just straight up nonsense. You gotta agree with me on that. Of course, don't forget to check out the Amazon affiliate links. Don't forget to check out Wolves and Apparel. And don't forget that we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. Also, this week we will be at PAX East up in Boston at the Boston Convention Center. It's gonna be a great time. We'll have a panel, we'll have a signing, we'll have probably other things. So come on down if you see us, say hi or don't. It's your life. And of course, like this video if you like it, subscribe if you really liked it, share this video with a friend, a friend who's itching to yell at some Zack Snyder hater and say that he doesn't know anything about Batman. I don't collect these comics for my health, folks. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.